Let's do that. Okay, so what are we looking at? Uh, I think we can do full screen. Okay, so this is a picture of the center of the galaxy. So we live in the Milky Way, uh, roughly um, 25,000 light years. We're, we're about 25,000 light years from the center of the Milky Way. The cent center of the Milky Way is, uh, has uh, lots of stars in its neighborhood. And only recently, and this was starting in the 1990s, using the Keck telescope in Hawaii, which is one of the most pop um, powerful optical telescopes, people were able to start watching the stars in the very middle of the galaxy. Okay, so the movie will show you the orbits of all these stars as they're actually seen. The person who who leads this work is, uh, her name is Andrea Gez. And it's really uh, very remarkable work. So people had speculated that there might be a black hole in the center of the Milky Way. But uh, these are the observations. So let's just watch those stars. And the time on the top right, you see the year. So the observations took over a decade. And uh, so let's just repeat that. I could, I could watch that endlessly. Okay, so that's a very impressive one, the brown one, right? And here's the, okay. Obviously there's something pretty weird over there. Right, which is causing all these stars to um, to go to really have dramatic changes in their orbits. Okay, so there's some guy just here, which uh, is causing things to absolutely change their orbit. So that, from these observations and just Newton's theory, you can work out what the mass of the object must be, and that mass turns out to be four, four million solar masses. Okay, so this is called a supermassive black hole. The mass is four times ten to the six, the mass of the sun. So, that's fairly convincing. There's something very massive there, but uh, who knows if it's a black hole. So the next step in that process is to say, well, what's the short shell radius? How big is the black hole? And can we look at it? Could we possibly see it? So if the mass is 4 million solar masses, it turns out the short shell radius is uh, 17 times the radius of the sun. Okay, so it's a big thing. Roughly 10 times as big as the sun. But it's a million times more massive than the sun. And as I said, it's located 25,000 light years away from us. Okay, so this Schwarzschild radius uh, tra translates into 1.2 times 10 to the 10 meters. 25,000 light years is 2.4 times 10 to the 20 meters. So from this you can get the angle, the angular size on the sky. And that's what astronomers care about. So obviously there's this object, here's its Schwarzschild radius, um, and it's at some distance d. So the angle it subtends on the sky is rs over d, and that is approximately 0.5 times 10 to the minus 10 radians. 
Okay, it's a very, very tiny angle. So can we see such an angle? Well, uh, the way you see such small angles is you need a very big telescope, right? Because the angular resolution of a telescope, the resolution, theta, do you remember the formula for the resolution? What is it? Lambda over D, Lambda over D very good. Lambda over D. Uh, D, in this case, is the size of the telescope. Let's call it capital D so it doesn't get conferred, confused with that one. So the angular resolution of a telescope is the wavelength divided by the size of the aperture. Let's imagine we built a telescope as big as the Earth. Right? So we use the whole diameter of the Earth. That's going to help. Let's use, uh, you know, feasible radio waves um, uh, where people do radio astronomy. And so uh, the upper limit of radio astronomy uh, are frequencies of about 1,000 gigahertz. And this corresponds to lambda of about 0.3 uh, millimeters. So a radio wave of about a third of a millimeter is about the upper limit of what people use for radio astronomy. So the lambda would be, um, the lambda is one third times 10 to the minus three in meters. The size of the Earth in meters is how many? About 10,000 kilometers, the diameter of the Earth. So that is 10 to the 10 to the 7 meters. So that's one third times 10 to the minus 10. What do you know? <laughs> okay, so we can do it. <laughs> one third is less than a half. <laughs> okay, we can just do it. Isn't it incredible? This happens again and again and again in cosmology. You ask some ridiculously impossible question. Can I measure this? And the answer is usually it's just at the limit of what we can do, right? And then you work for 50 years and it happens, right? It's weird. Uh, the, so this is probably just because we always underestimate what we can do. We're always close to the threshold of doing something mind-boggling, all right? And so I believe this very, very, very strongly, for example, that in uh, the next 50 years, we will image the Big Bang. I mean, we will see exactly what happened, where did everything come from. I, I think that's a near certainty, but uh, most people think it's hopelessly impossible. But if you start to think about the practicalities, th there is actually nothing stopping us from seeing the Big Bang using gravitational waves. But anyhow, this is just on the limit of what's doable. And in fact, it's happening. So next year, this will happen. Let me show you some. Uh, and the, one of the leaders of this project is here at Perimeter. Anyone know who that is? Avery Broderick. OK. So these are pictures made by Avery. Um, this is the black hole in the center of our galaxy. So that's the short shot radius. And what's happening is there's a cloud of gas surrounding it. The gas is emitting radio waves at roughly these wavelengths. So Avery and his friends have gotten every radio, well, many radio telescopes, I think about six or eight radio telescopes all around the world, one at the South Pole, one at Chile, uh, where are all the others? I'm not sure where all the others are, some in Europe. So he's got all these radio telescopes. They're all looking in this direction. They're all taking data. The data is stored on uh, hard drives. And then they've got to be synchronized, incredibly synchronized. So they need uh, atomic clocks at each telescope. And you, you need to know very, very accurately the time stream, and you need to synchronize the time streams. And then you create an interference pattern. 
between what um, these different radio telescopes see. And in that way, the whole Earth really is a single telescope. So they, they've done it. This is the simulated image. So this is actually the appearance. If I had perfect vision, and I could just look at the black hole and see the radio emission from this cloud of dust, this is literally due to the black hole, that I don't see radio emission coming so much coming from this direction because the black hole is just swallowing it all. Right? There's stuff around the edges and it manages to escape. So that's the simulated image. This is Avery's projection of what the EHT will actually see due to its limited uh, resolution and uh, noise and all kinds of other instrumental effects. That's his expectation for what they would see. So it's not quite the real thing. But it's pretty clear there's a black disk. And uh, so, as it says, 2017, 2018, that's what they'll do. Okay, so I, I happen to know that they've already got something like that. <laughs> they haven't gone public yet with it, but um, they will be doing that soon. So, um, yeah, so we can literally see there is a big black hole. We can see it's short shot radius, and it's sitting in the center of our galaxy. One day, probably people will travel there and have holidays <laughs> next to a black hole. It might be a really good uh, opportunity for a casino. <laughs>